My name is Paul Luna, and you're tuned into FMB Lunacy. I am here today with Chef Stephen Satterfield. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm the executive chef and co-owner of Miller Union. We've been open for 11 years and counting. Um, and I'm also the author of Root to Leaf, and I'm working on a new cookbook. Uh, what's the name of it or is there a name yet there is a working title that can't be uttered <laughs> yet um, <laughs> until i talk to my publisher but uh it's a it's a vegetable book and it's going to be um like sort of the next phase after roots leaf which was a, a very simple vegetable book for the home cook revolving around the seasons this one's a little bit more um, looking into texture and flavor profiles that are a little outside of my comfort zone in a great way. Um, just amping up the flavors a bit and using some um, international ingredients to to emphasize what these vegetables can be and how good they can be. Is there a particular vegetable that speaks to you? They all speak to me. <laughs> and I'm listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't really pick favorites. I, whatever really is in season at the moment, I get geeked out about. And, and then after the, towards the end of the season, you're ready for the change. And that's what I love is that when you cook with the seasons, there is so much variety that changes and you, you know, you follow the weather and, and you see what happens and watch your growers. What's your cooking background? Essentially, I was working in kind of casual and short order places when I was pretty young in my um, 20s. And I was playing music in an indie rock band and it was just sort of a side gig. But the more I learned about food, the more compelled I was. And then when I realized that chefs were actually a thing in Atlanta that and they were successful and they had their own restaurants. And, and I started working for some of them. Uh, I became real, I just got the bug and I wanted to, I wanted to emulate. When you were a kid, did you enjoy vegetables? I didn't really like vegetables that much when I was a kid, um, but I liked, I was a picky eater, but I liked uh, when I liked baking cakes and helping my mom cook, helping my grandmother cook. And I used to cook dinner for my family like once a week when I was a teenager, just for fun because I could, and my mom wanted a break. So I wasn't that good, but I, I wasn't afraid, you know? And then once I learned technique and flavor and, and really understood how to, you know, watch what's happening, the alchemy of cooking, um, I became very enamored with it. Is there a dish you make at home that is simply embarrassing for you to talk about <laughs> a bowl of cereal <laughs> <laughs> do you create at home or do you create at the restaurant both but when i i guess what i'm saying is when i need some peace and quiet i prefer to do it at home mm -hmm. but sometimes when i want to make a big mess it's better to do it at the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> can you share with us your view on restaurant and community yeah, I think um, restaurants really are the a, a big part of the fabric of community, and you know everybody has their their local place that they love to go once a week or whatever that they feel like they're at home when they go there. Um, restaurants can give a lot to the community. the The chefs can, you know, teach home cooks how to prepare things or you know raise money for a charity and it's really you know we're constantly giving because we're in the hospitality industry and we we are hospitable people in general by nature so we want to help we want to make things better we and a lot of times food is the vehicle for that you're not a vegetarian or a vegan oh no i'm an omnivore and I have been through phases, though, of vegetarianism and veganism. How did this love affair for vegetable came about? In your creation and in your books, 
vegetable is the, 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 the main ingredient. Well, they're the inspiration. And I, right. I think it's just going back to like the relationship between a grower and a chef. It's so important to me. And, you know, the anticipation of what's being harvested and what can you do with it. It's like, it's fun to limit yourself to those things that are just in season because they taste better and fresher and they just excite me. And so I think I, there's still so much to be discovered about fruits and vegetables as they're, they have so many possibilities and texture and, and flavor. Um, more so I think than, than other things because there, there's still a lot to, to be explored. I mean, think about the spiralizer, for example. You know, that's something that was introduced in the past 10 years, whatever. And the craze that it's created because it's a new way to eat a vegetable. You know, something like that, the mandolin, you know, can change your perspective on, on a root vegetable because you can eat root, something like a rutabaga raw because it's sliced so thin, you can bite right through it and taste it in a delicious way. And so there's just so many, there's so many things that we can still discover about them. And I, it's kind of still the, the it's, I guess it's the last, uh, the last, you know, frontier. And the natural <laughs> when you're cre <laughs> when you're creating a, a a menu, is the focus on on the vegetable as like the main course, and the main course is the side. Well, it's more like if you if you have if you think about there's a a meat on the plate and there's vegetables on the plate. I start at the bottom and work my way up to, to the meat. So like the, the way I work on a menu is I look at the harvest list and decide what's going to go with what. And, oh, this would be great with duck. This would be great with braised pork or whatever. And then just, you know, the vegetables to me dictate what the menu will be. And then, and then we match the proteins in a matchmaking way. And it's, it's, it's a... I feel like it's just a very natural way to work because it allows you to respond to to the farmer's list rather than pulling an idea from wherever and saying, this is what I'm gonna do. It's very easy to make um, a unilateral decision about what's gonna go on a plate, but to, to make it a decision that you have to collaborate, I think it makes it more interesting. Chef, you survived cancer. Can you talk about the frame of mind that you were in at that time? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty scared because I had never experienced anything like that before. Um, I had to have unexpected surgery and then I found out I had to do three rounds of chemotherapy. Um, definitely not something that I was I ever you know, anticipated or, or thought about in my future. And it was a real reality check, um, just how precious life can be and how tenuous it can be. But I also learned a lot about my endurance and, and um, it helped me reprioritize things a little bit and just really focus on positive, being positive and working on goals to get to where I wanted to be. You just wanted it to live. The hell with being sick. That's right. And then once I got over it and, and you know, get, getting through chemotherapy is a lifesaver, but it's also very draining. It's exhausting. And once you start to shake it and get the symptoms out of your body, you really feel like a new life. Like you, you really feel completely invigorated and it's a powerful feeling that just, I, I really wanted to just go, go, go and make up for all the time that I missed. Fill in the blank. Cooking is? Therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's just, um, you know, it, the, the rhythm of it, the pace of it, the, the focus, 
and attention that you put into it, it gives you a place to direct. And that's what I like about it. It keeps me occupied. As, as, I'm as, very fidgety. <laughs> as the chef, obviously, in the restaurant, chef owner, how do you keep your staff? Or how do you keep your staff producing the excellence that is now become a part of Miller Union? I think one way that we keep our staff is that Neil and I both work in the restaurant every day and we are there for long hours, just like the team, working side by side, supporting them, asking them for their, for their support. And we do lineups every day and talk about what is important to us and remind people of our goals and our mission is to take care of people, make them feel comfortable, especially now during COVID and happy and content. And I think also we share with our team how much we care about them and that we are thankful and grateful to have them and that they help make the vision of the restaurant run. So it's, it's really their time investment is, has a major return for us keeping the same people on the team, you know, on the floor, some of our servers and bartenders have been with us for a really long time. People know them by name. They ask for them. They say hello, like a friend. Is there anything in particular that you would love to share with us? Something that we have not talked about, something that is in your mind, whether it be about the book, whether it be about COVID, anything that you can, that you would love to share with us? Yeah, a couple of things come to mind. Um, I'm really proud of Miller Union, the fact that we have navigated this uncertain time to such degree, because I think we have really, um, between feeding healthcare workers when we were first shut down to figuring out how to keep people feeling safe and wanting to come back during such a crazy time, I, I feel like we've, we've achieved that. And we put so much thought and care into all of our moves right now. And we've really analyzed a lot of what we're doing and, and try to make things as efficient and smart as possible. You know, we had to furlough a lot of people. It was a very hard thing to do. But I'm I think where we are now, we're in a stronger place as a team and we feel even more connected than ever before. Um, but another thing I wanted to share is that, you know, I think there's a lot of praise and even almost fetishism around chefs. And um, it's it kind of bothers me a little bit because we're all just real people we're humans and we're all struggling in our in different ways you know and this has been a hard really hard year for restaurants in general um but I, but to continue to support the places that are meaningful to you and the, especially if you know the owners and have a connection with them or you just feel comfortable there and you, and you want to keep going back it's so important right now more than ever before to support those places because so many of them are in danger of not making it through this, um, you know, much lower traffic time. And until everyone is vaccinated and, and it feels like a safer place and a safer thing to do, a lot of people aren't going to go to restaurants because they just don't feel like it's a good idea. So, you know, buy the takeout and get the meal kits and get buy a bottle of wine instead of going to the package store. Like buy from the people that, you know, that are supporting the community because it, it's so important right now to, to do that. And it, we can feel it and we, we feel the love from the community and just a good reminder to support those places that you care about because they need you right now. Do you consider yourself a lunatic chef Satterfield? <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. I think I can get a little crazed at times, but it, I, I'm probably not. I, I wouldn't classify myself as a lunatic. I don't think so. Uh, 